topic of how to buy a gun in Panama, the process and differences. So it's very different in Panama. Um, you need to be a resident or a citizen to buy a firearm in Panama or even to apply for a firearm in Panama. The process is very different from US and Canada. Uh, prices are double of what you see in the US. So if you see something uh, that costs $800 in Panama, most likely it'll cost $1,600 or more, plus 7% tax. Uh, this is due to um, the legislation that prohibited the importation of firearms a couple of years back. It has now been um, repealed, but before there was a great shortage of firearms and thus um, the prices have gone through the roof and this, as a result, the selection is very limited still to this day. Um, importation of the firearms is not advisable. So if you have your favorite gun in Canada or the US, <coughs> sorry, to import it to uh, uh, Panama and export it from your country of origin is a big hassle. Number one, you need to um, uh, obtain an export permit. Number two, you need to use one of the uh, approved carriers, FedEx, UPS, and et cetera, so courier service only. And it will be extremely expensive to do so. Three, um, in Panama, when it arrives, uh, the customs dues uh, will be through the roof in tune of 20, 25%. And number four, uh, the local agents in uh, Panama will keep the firearm for ballistic testing and may keep it for several months up to half a year, sometimes longer, uh, eight months, 12 months in an unconditioned, uncon not air conditioned, non climatized um, storage facility where it may be rusting away in the high humidity of Panama. Uh, hunting is very limited. There is no big game in Panama. Uh, maybe some birds only. So unlike in the US and Canada, it is very, very limited. Um, gun radius is very limited. There's one in Panama that I know of. And that's it. Maybe there's another one, David, uh, in Cherokee province. Carry is allowed, unlike uh, in Canada, where it is only uh, through extreme um, uh, extreme bureaucracy. Uh, no limit on ammo capacity uh, or mag size or barrel lengths. I know in Canada there is a limit of 10 um, for semi-auto uh, guns and of center fire ammunition and the barrel lengths must be um, four and a quarter, I think, inches or above, nothing uh, below that. Um, in the US there are some limitation from state to state in terms of the ammo capacity and barrel lengths as well. So the process, how to get it done. Um, you must be a resident or citizen of Panama to do it to begin with. Number one, choose your gun, pay for it. There are two or three stores in Panama City that I know of. Uh, selection is very limited. Prices are through the roof. Number two, uh, fill out the permit application at the store. The stores will help you to do it. Uh, mind you, the application is in Spanish, so use your Google Translate or other means. Uh, submit supporting documents, which consist of the police report. Now, this is a local police report in Panama, nothing to do with the police report from your country of origin that was part of your immigration process. This process is completely different. It's done by the different ministries, so you must obtain a police report from your local um, police uh, uh, constabulary, if I may say so. Um, your lawyer may help you to obtain it as well. Uh, proof of income. Uh, the reasoning for this, the proof of income, is to see two things, to prove two things to the ministry. Uh, one is that you can afford a firearm, uh, and two, that you have something to protect, meaning uh, not your family, but uh, your income, your property, uh, etc. Uh, three, uh, they're trying to see that uh, you will be careful with the firearm, that you will have something to lose, and you will not use it recklessly to obtain, uh, to rob somebody. Um, so they, their thought process is such that if you are uh, well off, uh, you will be more responsible with a firearm and less reckless in terms of the use of it to obtain uh, other means. 
Number four, pay the fees. So the fees are quite reasonable uh, by our standards for Panamanians could be exorbitant as well. So it's $100 for ownership permit and 50 bucks for carry for a handgun. Permits are 150 altogether. Uh, long guns do not need a carry permit. Number five, submit to drug test. Um, so the blood, the blood will be drawn, urine and such to uh, see if you're under uh, the influence of your user. Uh, number six, submit to psychological evaluation. Now that's all in Spanish, so that's fun and dandy. Um, the reasoning behind it is that you are of sane mind, that you don't intend to kill your spouse or business partners. Number seven, uh, sign up for the attend to attend the gun club training. So that's straightforward. You just become a member of uh, the gun club. The only one I, that I know of is in Panama City. Um, you attend the training and you know attend it once in a while, once a year or so. Uh, number eight, wait six to 12 months for your license to come through. Yeah, that's a... Uh, um, that's uh, that's that's long. Uh, so during this six to twelve months, that's bureaucracy. That's one and two. Uh, they take your firearm, every firearm that, that you buy, not just one. But if you have five, they will take every one of those five and will submit to the same through the same process. And they make a ballistic ballistic test. They keep the uh, copy of the brass and bullet that is fired from the firearm. So if it is used in uh, shooting, uh, legal or illegal, uh, during the crime or self-protection um, they will use that to identify the firearm that was part of the shooting number nine pick up your firearm upon receiving your license and after that you're good to go now the further slides I have will give you a representation of pricing this is just a catalog screenshots from a catalog of one of the dealers uh, from Panama um, to give an understanding of the selection and pricing so the selection is normally high-end um, German, Austrian, uh, Czech, uh, and U.S. guns like Breda, uh, CZ, uh, Walter, uh, and such, with uh, a few uh, cheaper options from Turkey. So here is your standard Breda 92 FS double action trigger, double ac double single, uh, 1,400 bucks, and uh, plus tax. Uh, Beretta PX Storm, subcompact, uh, 1300 Yeah, the price is at the bottom of the slide. Uh, there is Beretta APX striker fire gun, just over a thousand. Uh, <laughs> funny stuff in the States, it costs uh, between 400 and 800 uh, dollars, depending on the uh, APX model. Uh, APX uh, uh, full size version, 1300 uh, Walter uh, raise gun. Match steel frame, uh, three thousand uh, dollars. Walter PPQ striker fired, uh, almost eighteen hundred. And as you can see, nine mil, um, nine millimeter is the cartridge of reference. Now, in terms of ammo, oh, there's another thing. Yes, that I remember. In terms of ammunition, you are allowed to buy only the ammunition for your gun. Meaning, if you have a nine mil, you're allowed only to buy nine mil. You won't be able to buy forty or forty-five ACP or thirty-eight special or what have you. If you have a revolving thirty-eight and a nine mil two guns, then you'll be able to buy. 9 mil and 38 special. So there is a CZTS, um, a competition gun, over $2,000. Shadow 2, um, CZ $800, $1,900. Uh, striker fired CZ uh, $1,250. Uh, CZ 75, the venerable, just over a thousand bucks. Uh, that's a Turkish Turkish option, uh, less pricey, um, less quality. You'll get what you pay for, $800. Another uh, gun, this one is uh, uh, has a brand Rock Island on it, but it's assembled in the it's done in the Philippines. Um, very poor quality, by the way. Uh, although some swear by it, but the the quality is very poor. Uh, of assembly and parts, uh, just over $500 on it. Um, some shotgun options, uh, Beretta, 1700 bucks. Benelli, uh, over 